Well, welcome. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Has anybody else joined us? All right, well, welcome to the Candidate Statement Cost webinar. Um, just for the record, today is Wednesday, September 29th at 4 o'clock. And um, again, my name is Janine Boyarski. I'm the Manager of Administration for the Registrar of Voters. I'm in charge of Human Resources, Budget and Purchasing. And one of my specific election-related duties is to come up with candidate statement cost estimates and to determine the actual candidate statement costs and, um, uh, and work with that. So what we're going to cover today on our agenda, I want to talk a little bit about the legislation. We'll, I'll demonstrate you how I come up with the candidate statement cost estimates. Um, we'll look at how the number of candidates submitting cost estimates impact, uh, submitting candidate statements impacts that cost estimate. Um, we'll talk about how we do the deposits as well as how refunds are done. We will look at how actual costs are calculated, and I'll talk to you a little bit about some of our cost reduction efforts. So the reason why I wanted to start with legislation, um, for many of you it may seem very natural and obvious that a candidate can put a statement in our sample ballot, um, but for others it may seem a little bit unusual that they can you know, you might look at it as a public service announcement or as advertising. But the reason why a candidate can put a statement in the sample ballot has to do with the California Elections Code. And what it says is that the local agency may estimate the total cost of printing, handling, translating, and mailing the candidate statements, including costs incurred as a result of complying with the Voting Rights Act. This is the legislation that allows a candidate to put their statement in the sample ballot. It also gives the registrars of voters the ability to um, make cost estimates, and also it allows the registrar of voters to require that each candidate pay an estimated pro rata share as a condition of their having their statement included in the sample ballot. We're required to make sure that when a candidate does come to us and um, wants to submit their sample, their candidate statement for a sample ballot, that they do understand that the estimate is just an approximation of the actual cost, um, and that it could vary, it could be more, it could be less. Um, if the actual candidate statement costs are less than the deposit amount, then we are required by law to refund the overpayment within 30 days after the election. If the actual candidate statement cost is greater than the deposit amount, then the Registrar of Voters is able to bill the candidate for that additional expense. Um, at this point, before we go on, I'd like to just, I know we have a few people join us, so welcome. Um, I just want to remind everybody, uh, if you could make sure you mute your phones um, while you're listening. That way, you, if you have somebody come into your office or you're doing some other work, um, we won't be able to hear that. And also, um, please keep us on mute. If you put us on hold, we'll all everybody listening to this webinar will be able to hear the hold music. I'd like to encourage, if you'd like to ask questions at any point during the presentation, uh, you can do that by using your phone or by asking them online. There's a, an area where you can type in your question. And if you have any technical difficulties, um, please call our webinar support line at area code 877-296-6527. I don't know if anybody has any questions at this point, but I just wanted to make sure that I had covered some of the, the administrative uh, information. Janine, I'd like to ask how long the webinar is, please. It's scheduled to be an hour. I don't know if it will actually 
you know, be exactly an hour, but that's what it's scheduled for. It'll be no longer than an hour. Okay, so let's talk about candidate statement cost estimates. So there's, in for Orange County, we put uh, three main things into our cost estimates. The first are the labor and indirect costs, and we estimate um, a on one of our office assistants at the top step for two hours. Um, we also add some labor burden, that would be the benefit cost of that employee, as well as some indirect costs. And those are other labor and supply charges which um, are not directly attributable to the election, but, so, but support elections in general. These are things like general office supplies, licenses, and maintenance costs for election equipment, um, and the cost of all the purchasing that needs to be done for each election. These, are the, these costs we, we know and we've pretty much set, and they're currently less than $100 per candidate statement. And we're looking at those on a yearly basis and trying to find ways to uh, reduce those on an ongoing basis. The second, the second piece of our candidate statement estimate is the translation um, into Chinese, Korean, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Those are the languages that are required for Orange County under the Voting Rights Act. And again, that amount is pretty much a fixed amount. Um, we are charged $45 per candidate statement per language, as well as 23 cents per word, and we max it out at 200 words, um, because you're, or, or whatever the maximum limit of words is for that particular candidate statement. Um, we know that according to the rules of submitting your candidate statement, a city counts as one word, so Rancho Santa Margarita would be one word. The translation company might look at it differently, but we don't think it's fair to pass that change on to you. The biggest area of uncertainty is with our printing costs. And our goal is to try to calculate how much the page that the race is in, the page that the race is on, costs in the sample ballot, and divide it by the number of candidates. So the areas of uncertainty are things like how many candidate statements and what type will be on one page. And the way we address this in our estimates is we assume two 200-word candidate statements. Sometimes you have an option between a 200 and a 400-word, or if there's only a 250-word candidate statement, we'll use two 250-word candidate statements. The next area of uncertainty is how many pages will the sample ballot be. That changes from election to election. It depends on uh, what other, how many races are there, how many measures or propositions are on the ballot. And what we try to do is look at past elections of the same type and use a conservative estimate. Um, if anybody has printed before, you know that there's a lot of sort of fixed sunk costs for a small run, and when you have a larger run, the costs spread out and you end up being less. So we try to take a smaller number of pages, which might cost a little bit more per page to do our estimate um, if we're not sure, whereas the actual cost might have more pages, which might reduce the cost ultimately. And then finally, we, have, we um, are trying to estimate what the ballot order will be or how many sample ballots exactly will be ordered. And what we do is we take the number of registered voters, we add um, 25%, and that includes uh, sample ballots that we have to resend, sample ballots that are requested and put in uh, public areas, as well as the five English and two of each language per precinct. So those are the sample ballots that will be at the poll site on election day. One thing that we did new for the November election is we realized that the number and type of candidate statements makes a big difference as far as um, the actual costs and as far as the cost estimates. So we provided on our website um, variations or what it would look like if different kinds of candidate statements or different numbers of candidate statements were filed. And I provided just a small chart so you can see a sampling. What is interesting is um, we estimate two 200-word statements are filed. 
If there's one 200 word statement, as you can see, the cost goes up. At three 200 word statements, um, it goes down because remember, we're taking one page of a sample ballot and dividing it by the number of candidate statements. With four 200 word statements, that would be your, of the first four, your most cost effective price because we can fit four 200 word candidate statements on a page. If you've noticed, when we get to five 200 word statements, the cost goes back up a little bit. And that's because at that point, you're talking two pages in the sample ballot. When you get to six 200 word candidate statements, um, it goes down and it matches the same number as three 200 word candidate statements because six, can, six candidate statements on two pages is the same division as three candidate statements on one page. So that's how we look at um, how the number of candidate statements in the sample ballot impacts the price. So when you submit your candidate, when a candidate submits their candidate statement, um, they're required to fill out the agreement, and you can see a picture of it on your screen. Um, they are required to submit a deposit which is equal to the estimated candidate statement cost. They have to sign per the elections code that they understand that it's only an estimate and the actual cost may be significantly more or less. And they also have to agree that they understand that we will bill for the actual cost after the election, after the sample ballot, which turns out to be after the number and type of candidate statements are known, the sample ballot is ordered and printed, and the translation and printing bills are received. And as I mentioned, if a candidate is due a refund, they will receive that within 30 days after the election. There are a number of situations where uh, a candidate statement may be withdrawn, and when a candidate statement is withdrawn, we will we provide a full refund. Um, the two the two cases are if the candidate statement is withdrawn before the end of the filing period, or if the contest does not appear on the ballot because the number of nominated candidates does not exceed the number of candidates to be elected, which just means that people are appointed rather than elected. So in both of those cases, we will provide a refund. Um, our goal is to get those refunds back as quickly as possible. In most cases, um, what we try to do is, if we can, we can give, try to give you back your check or just refund your um, credit card. If not, we put a rush on getting a new check drawn up so that we can get that refund back to you. So once we know the number and types of statements, we know the average size of the sample ballot um, per language as well as how many sample ballots have been printed, we can go ahead and pull together the actual cost of the candidate statements. We have kept our labor and indirect costs and the translation costs fixed, so those will not change. So really what we're looking at is the actual printing costs that are used for the ballot orders and the number of pages in the sample ballots. What we do is we calculate the total cost for all the candidate, the total printing cost for all the candidate statements in one race, and then we use that number and divide it by the number of candidate statements. And we weight a 400 word candidate statement as twice of a 200 word candidate statement because it takes up more room in the sample ballot. The, the picture that you have on your screen is actually what our candidate statement actual cost calculations look like. Um, and you can see where we've subtotaled the different areas. The printing includes the uh, page charge multiplied by the number of pages in the sample ballot times the run charge, which is the amount per thousand. Um, we divide that by the number of candidate statements. Some things are taxable, some things are not, so we've accounted for all of that. You can see the translation and typeset charges that I mentioned, and we subtotal that, and then the labor uh, amount. It comes out as a subtotal. There's one for each language, and then we add up each language to come up with the total cost. So 
So some of the things that we do to try to reduce our costs, uh, first of all, we review our indirect costs on a yearly basis and look at ways that we can uh, reduce that amount. We competitively procure our translation and our sample ballot printing. So we look at ways we can reduce the printing cost. And in the last competitive procurement, we reduced our printing costs by 5% overall. We're also looking at better estimating the number of sample ballots that we need to print. Um, if we keep the number closer to what, we're, what we actually use each election, that will also reduce the cost because printing for the most part, especially for a large area, um, tends to be the largest part of the candidate statement costs. So I guess this will be a relatively short webinar. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'd be happy to answer them at this point. Um, so the question that I heard it was if you could get a copy of the slides, and I believe we can make those available after the presentation. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Steve. All right, well, thank you all for participating. I really appreciate it. And you now have my contact information. So if you have any questions about candidate statements at any time, Please feel free to call me or email me, um, and I would be more than happy to answer your questions. All right, well, that concludes our webinar. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.